Hello new mamas, I am Dr. Bree, and I wanna share with you some of my top exercises for women who are newly postpartum. And also I'm gonna share some tips at the end. So I know you're short on time, I know you're a busy woman, let's get right to it. You really don't need any equipment, it's not required for this workout. However, I am gonna show one move that is really beneficial if you have a yoga block or a small pillow, and potentially a, um, an exercise band, like a booty band. So that is just gonna to be to the side for now. The first exercise that I want you to try is actually best done lying on your back to start with, but if you're seated, that's okay. You can try it seated as well. It's one of the best early exercises for recovery. So whether you've had a C-section or a vaginal delivery, you can give this one a try. Now, this is one you can try really early on as well. It doesn't require that you wait six weeks to give this a go. What you're gonna do is lying down or seated, you're gonna begin with the word hut. H-U-T. So you're just gonna say it out loud. And if you have like toddlers around or other kids around, they can you know listen and laugh and kind of play along. But what you're gonna do is simply say the word hut. Now I want you as you say it, say it out loud, hut, hut, hut. I want you to feel that lift of your pelvic floor and the gentle drawing in of your abs. I'm gonna show you, it's why I'm wearing a short shirt today. I'm gonna show you what I mean here. So I'm gonna show you from the side when I say hut, my, my belly, watch my belly as it goes hut, 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 hut. So you can feel that. It's, it's a way to kind of start waking up those deep core muscles. I remember 12 years ago when I had my son, how those muscles just felt like they were asleep and they'd never wake up. But believe me, ladies, they will wake up. So you need to start doing these basic exercises like hut and even breathing exercises too. So let's do five more huts together and feel that gentle lift of the pelvic floor and the drawing in of the low abs. Keep going, maybe two or three more, while you're saying that hut, hut. You might not really feel that connection yet with your pelvic floor. You might not be able to feel it, that's okay. Keep practicing, over time you will reconnect the mind and the body once again. A lot happened during pregnancy and then childbirth and you know, some time needs to be taken and some care needs to be taken to make those reconnections happen. So just have patience. So very similar to hut, we're now gonna do kind of a breathing imagination exercise. Again, this is great to do lying on your back, but if you're seated, that's okay too. I want you to imagine that you have a balloon. So pretend like you have a balloon in front of you. Now over time, you can actually progress to doing this exercise on your hands and knees, but let's just start lying down or seated. So what you're gonna do is pretend like you have a balloon. You're gonna inhale down into your low belly and into your ribs. So inhale all the way around 360 degrees. And as you exhale, feel like you're blowing up that balloon. Pretend like you have a balloon that's really easy to blow up. So don't like strain to get the blowing up part to start. Just do a gentle blowing through pursed lips and feel as you're doing that blowing, like you're blowing up a balloon, that your pelvic floor is gently lifting and your lower abs are pulling in. So go ahead and do it on your own. I hope you're doing it right now. You can hold that imaginary balloon up to your mouth if that helps you imagine. But again, feel the expansion as you inhale almost like your belly and your ribs are a balloon themselves. And then as you exhale, blow up that balloon. Now, if you want to try progressing to your hands and knees, now would be a good time. But be careful, if you have significant diastasis recti, the split, being on your hands and knees can be kind of a risky position just because it does put a lot of downward pressure on your anterior abdominal wall. So just be careful with this one. But if you wanna try it, you can picture that you have that balloon, your back is nice and flat like a tabletop, you inhale, and then you exhale, blow up that balloon. We inhale, releasing, and then exhale, blow up that balloon. Now, this time, inhale into your chest, just your chest, 
and then exhale, blow out even a little bit more. So you're really pulling that belly button to your spine. Again, I'm showing you a little bit more advanced on my hands and knees, but you might be ready for it. And release, whoo, let it go. Okay, we're gonna come onto our back for the next couple of exercises. So when you come down onto your back, this is just a little tip, don't just jackknife down. You want to carefully lower onto your elbow first, and then you can come onto your back. I'm gonna show you a series that's a really, really wonderful series. Uh, a lot of physical therapists use it, and it was developed by a, a PT named Shirley Sarman. The first part is really to get that basic breath, really that we just did. So inhale deeply into your belly, and then exhale, pull that belly toward your spine and lift that pelvic floor, if you can make that connection. If you're not quite there where you're making that connection, that's okay. Just Try to really feel in, and over time, you'll get it again. So let's do it one more time. Inhale deeply, and exhale, lift that pelvic floor, pull in the low belly, and hold it. Now I want you to hold while keeping a neutral spine. So this neutral spine is such that you could put the tips of your fingers under your back, but you can't necessarily stick your whole hand under your back. We do not want to be arched, not at all but you also don't want to be like this. You don't want to be in a strong pelvic tilt. So it's a neutral spine. You inhale and then you exhale, pull in, zip up that core and hold it, keeping that neutral spine position and the abs drawn in. So now we're gonna start breathing a little more into our chest. You can let your ribs expand, but don't breathe down into your belly because we're keeping that nice and strong. In this position, hold that zip up, hold that neutral spine, and you're simply going to extend your right leg along the floor and then bring it back up. You should feel, really feel, and then alternate sides. Really feel that resistance, especially as you drag your foot back up. You should feel almost a tug in your low abs, almost like your, your back is gonna want to arch like that, but don't let it. So keep going back and forth. If you need to take a rest and reset, do that breathing and then the drawing in around the neutral spine and then holding it. If you need to reset, that's okay. But keep going and you wanna keep your hip points really level and even, no rocking back and forth. We are simply sliding one foot along the ground and then back up. Keep breathing, ribs in, and then the other foot down and up. Slow and controlled. I always need to remind myself to pull my ribs in. They want to kind of flare up, so I need to remind myself to ribs in, belly in, neutral spine, zipped up, all of these reminders, so important. Now what I'm gonna do is two more on each side, and I want you to join me for these. If you feel like this is a big challenge for you, if you're very newly postpartum and you know, then stay here, don't go to the next level. But if you want to, I'm gonna show you level two. All right, I think that was two more on each side. Let's call it good. So take a minute to release, let go, maybe let your knees drop side to side. Just relax, take a deep belly breath. <sighs> let it all out. Let it all breathe in and out. And let's go to level two now. So, like I said, stick with level one if that was enough. If you want more, then we're going to this next level. So do that basic breath where you inhale and then exhale, zip up your core, keeping that nice neutral spine position. So again, your fingertips can go under, but not your whole hand. We don't want that arch where your whole hand can stick under. So nice neutral spine, zipped up position, ribs in, oh, so hard. Now you're gonna bring one leg up and then you're gonna straighten it out and then bring it in and down. Other leg in and straighten and in and down, keep going, and you'll see how I'm actually using my hands to make sure that my ribs are not 
jutting up toward the ceiling and that my pelvis is staying really level and that my core is really strong and that the only thing that's moving is my legs. So use your hands too. It's so helpful to have that feedback to make sure you're doing it right. And go slower than you think you should. I know we're busy. I know that we have tons to do, but take your time to really feel into this exercise and you'll get so much more out of it. So keep going and keep breathing. Don't hold your breath. You do have to breathe a little higher, you know, into your ribs and your chest, not so much that deep belly breathing that we like when we're nice and relaxed. That's a great breathing pattern for when you're relaxed, but for this exercise in particular, you're going to want to breathe a little higher because you're keeping so strong through the core. Neutral spine, no movement of the spine, it's really just of the legs. So let's do one more on each side. And if, you, if this is too much, then you can always go back to that heel slide that we did at first. Now, the Sarman series has several more. Oh my gosh, was that one more on each side? It was close enough. Let it go. Let your knees drop side to side. You should really be feeling that in your deep core. And if you can't feel it yet, you will. The more you practice this, the more you'll feel it. Now the Sarman series has five levels and I just showed you the first two. We're gonna stick there. If you want to Google how to do the rest of them, that's great. But right now while you're newly postpartum, we're just gonna stick with those to start. So our last exercise, take some deep breaths. Our last exercise is the one that if you have a, a yoga block or a ball or small pillow, that's ideal. So I'm gonna roll to my side and carefully exhale as I come up to sit, and I'm gonna grab my block and also my booty band. Now again, if you don't have a booty band, it's okay, uh, but, but do try to find a yoga block or a ball or pillow that you can put between your knees. Now I'm gonna show you the full meal deal with both. So very carefully put the band around your legs, and I hope I chose the right resistance. This is gonna be a lot, I think. <clears throat> put it right, the band right above your knees, and the block or the ball in between your knees. So you're gonna have to kind of shimmy that in there. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. This is gonna work our outer hips, our hip rotators, and our inner thighs, and our pelvic floor. So we're gonna first work our inner thighs and pelvic floor by squeezing gently against the block. Now don't squeeze too hard, especially if you had a pubic symphysis concern during pregnancy, this front pubic bone joint. If you had any concerns there, the last thing you wanna do is squeeze really hard because that can cause pain. So very gently, tiny gentle squeeze, just a gentle, gentle press inward against the block, more gentle than you think you should. Very gentle, engage against the block, and as you squeeze, feel those inner thigh muscles turn on just a little bit, and then feel your pelvic floor muscles turn on too. So it's just a gentle turning on of the center line. Now, the, if you don't have a booty band, this next part's gonna be hard. You're gonna have to either remove your block or not really do it. But what I want you to do is actually now press out against the booty band with your knees. So very, very gently press out, 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 out. You can even come up on your heels and rotate out just a little bit. Now see how, because I have this setup here, my block is being caught by the booty band. So it's a really great setup, but if you don't have it, get creative, remove the block, however you need to do it, but just open your knees apart a bit. I am really feeling this in my outer hips, really, really feeling this, and now I'm going to put my feet down and squeeze against the block again. So it's a very gentle squeeze, feeling it in the inner thighs, feeling a lift of the pelvic floor, really feeling even my low abs are turned on right now. Squeeze, 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 squeeze. And now we go out, so pressing out out against the booty band and like I said I'm really going to even get some hip rotation in not just the abduction so right now I'm pressing out against this booty band but now I'm going to get some external rotation as well by lifting my toes up off the ground and really opening those hips outward feeling it right out here strongly pressing 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 the block you know I could remove it but luckily my little setup has it in place 
and let's just do one more round. So my feet are coming down, my knees are gently squeezing inward against the block. Squeeze, 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 inner thighs contract, gently pulling in of the pelvic floor, pulling those low ribs down. Mine always wanna shoot up. So pulling them in, holding it, pressing inward against the block. And last time we open the knees apart. Open, 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 open. I'm gonna get in that rotation now. So toes up and open even more. Pressing, pressing, pressing against this band. And if you want a link, I'll put a link to these particular bands in the notes, but there's lots you can find. I just got mine on amazon.com. So hold it, hold it, hold it, and relax. Oh my gosh. Whew, that was a lot. So you're gonna remove the band and you're gonna carefully roll to your side. And now I wanna share some tips with you. <sighs> Exhale as you come to sit. Okay, so while I'm sharing some of these tips for you, just do some nice stretches, do something that feels really good to stretch out those hips. You don't wanna overtax yourself too much when you're just getting back into your fitness program. Be gentle on yourself. The last thing you do, I mean, your body is working so hard caring for your baby and you know, just getting back to normal, uh, you're gonna need to be gentle on yourself and be easy on yourself. This isn't like a bounce back to your size whatever genes after baby video, this is a take care of yourself video and get back to things in a sane and balanced way. So these are the top tips that I have for you. The first one is more just some advice. If you are uh, wondering about the use of an abdominal binder, it's something that you can do your own research on and you can ask your midwife or doctor about their thoughts. But my advice to you is that, first of all, you want to, if you're gonna try one, you wanna look for something that doesn't pinch around the middle because that can cause a lot of pressure around the middle that presses down on your, your internal organs, which can put a lot of pressure and strain on your pelvic floor and potentially contribute to things like prolapse, which we certainly don't want that. Now, if you find a nice binder that feels really uniformly supported and like it's uplifting and it's not compressing inward and pressing down, then you know, go for it, but I would not recommend wearing it 24 hours a day. I would not recommend wearing it even a majority of the time. I'd recommend wearing it during periods of more intense activity, such as, for example, if you're going for a walk and pushing your baby in the stroller, or you're going for a, a short hike, or you're doing housework, like you're vacuuming or doing, you know, intensive laundry, <laughs> or if you are, you know, you can even potentially use it during certain workouts and exercise programs, that's fine, but don't rely on it as a crutch because ultimately, although it's nice to have the muscles and everything kind of put back and held together, externally, we ultimately want to teach our body how to do that ourselves. You know, so don't lean on it as a crutch. It's just a temporary helper if you wanna try using it. The next tips I have are more for, you know, daily life. So the first thing is really watch your posture. It's so important as a new mom to really focus on that good posture because we're forward like this so much of the day. Getting our baby, breastfeeding, all of those things like that. That's forward. Your head is forward, your shoulders are forward. All that causes tension and tightness. Downward pressure on the pelvic floor, which is the last thing we want. It can contribute to prolapse. And what we wanna do is lift and open the chest. So reverse that forward by doing some chest stretches by rolling out your shoulders, by looking up your head, doing things like that, that focus on a lengthening and a lift and a lifting of your you know, ribs off your pelvis so it's not like this. Think of a lift and that's really gonna go a long way. When you're carrying your baby, if you're using a carrier, try to keep the baby really close to you. Obviously, you wanna focus more on bringing baby to center rather than you know off to the side or you know make sure that if you're using a pack you're using a well-fitted sling or you know baby carrier and making sure that your baby is as close to center where whether baby's on your back or on your front or in a sling position just make sure they're close to center when you are lifting baby you want to be sure to bring baby close to you so if baby is in a crib and you are you know, leaning over the side of the crib, bring baby close to the edge of the crib and then lift. 
so you're not leaning over into the middle of the crib and then just hoisting, you know, I mean, <laughs> I'm making it, I'm exaggerating here, but you don't want to strain your back by leaning way over to the center of the crib and then just lifting the baby up. You want to bring it as close to you as possible and then lift. So it's also important to exhale on exertion. So every time you're lifting anything from your baby to the, you know, laundry basket, you're doing a lot of laundry now that you have a little one, you want to exhale on exertion. So that's breathing out as you're lifting. That out breath, that exhalation, is also going to help lift your pelvic floor and gently draw in your abdominals, which supports your back and helps prevent uh, like a bulging outward or downward pressure on your pelvic floor. So it's really important for preventing, I should say, prolapse. And it's also important if you have diastasis recti, if you have that split, it's important in bringing that flatness back to your tummy and not making that split worse. So you wanna exhale with exertion, super, super important. Some more keys. When you're getting in and out of bed, you wanna think about, uh, especially if you had any type of um, pelvic girdle dysfunction or pubic dysfunction, any type of joint dysfunction during pregnancy, you know, your ligaments are still really soft and loose from pregnancy. And especially if you're breastfeeding, the hormones remain in your body that kind of keep everything soft and loose for quite a while. So you want to be really, really careful with yourself. And when you're getting out of bed, think of your body moving as a unit rather than either sitting like a jackknife straight up in bed and then getting up or kind of, you know, rolling your feet off and then sort of sitting up. You want to think about moving as a unit. So roll to your side. If you were on your back, lying on your back, think of rolling to your side. And then as your legs come off, your upper body sits up. So you're going to have to use your hands to help, but think of moving as a unit as much as you can, rather than twisting your legs off while you're kind of lying down and then sitting up or doing something weird like that. Same thing with getting out of a car. Rather than twisting your legs out of the car first and then getting out, think of turning your whole body so that your legs are coming out of the car as your body turns so that you're not twisting excessively. All of that twisting can really, really be challenging and hard on your pelvis with ligaments that are still soft from pregnancy. So just always think of moving your body as a unit and that will really, really help. So the last thing I have for you is really just a simple one. It's just to remember that if you are um, newly postpartum or even if you're you know, a couple weeks or even months postpartum and you're still breastfeeding, just know that if you have symptoms of pelvic floor concerns such as prolapse, maybe you're worried that you have prolapse or you have you know, diastasis recti, if you have things going on that you're, not, that you're concerned about, take steps to address these issues, but just know that so much can change naturally on their own as your body comes back to its normal state after pregnancy and even again after weaning. So breastfeed as long as you can, it's so good for your baby, but just know that even while you're breastfeeding, the hormones will still be there that are maybe potentially preventing you from snapping back to your pre-pregnancy state. So just have patience with yourself. This is not a call to stop you know, to wean early, it's simply a call to say, be patient with yourself and know that so much can change naturally on its own. So I developed a mild prolapse when I was only about three weeks postpartum because I was ridiculous and went for a run. <laughs> now, please don't do that. Learn from my mistake. But what I did is I did the healing modalities that I'm showing you today. I did exercises. I did the lifestyle techniques. I lifted correctly. I did all those things right. And my prolapse went away. And part of it, it went away because I did the right things. I took the steps needed to heal it. But the other part of it is that the hormones in my body were still circulating wildly at three weeks postpartum. And they ultimately went back to normal when I was done breastfeeding and when you know I was done with that uh, initial postpartum period, things did go back to normal. So it can take, depending on how long you're breastfeeding and depending on you, it can take several months for things to go back to normal, but it's okay. Even after you're done breastfeeding, it can take some weeks for things to sh shift back to normal. But just have patience with yourself know that things are going to change naturally on their own and take the steps needed to strengthen your body, 
to use the right body mechanics and to do all those daily task activities that you're doing 99% of your day. The exercises are just a tiny little portion. It's the rest of the stuff that you do all day long that really, really matters. So focus on that stuff and you should be really, really in a good spot for addressing and treating the issues like prolapse that you may have a mild case of, and or at the very least preventing them from getting worse. So talk to a women's health physical therapist in your area if you need additional support. And you can also sign up for my Lift Pelvic Organ Support Series. It's a wonderful program to really get you started on a really great path to safely strengthening the pelvic floor and the rest of the core and really a path to healing and getting your body back after baby without worrying about the size of jeans but really with a main focus on just building that strong foundation again that is so important for your confidence for your self-esteem and ultimately for flattening the tummy as well so Thanks so much for watching. I hope this was helpful. If you loved it, share it with a friend who might need it. Share it in your postpartum support groups. Share it with your other mommy friends. Share it in the stroller fitness classes that you go to. And please remember, as always, to eat clean, move every day, and you will shine brighter. I will see you next time.